With the AFC's top seed and the opportunity for a first round bye and home field advantage at stake, the Buffalo Bills faced off against the Cincinnati Bengals on January 2nd. Both teams, riding high on months of unbeaten streaks, converged on a Monday night for a match that promised to deliver the excitement fans had been eagerly anticipating. Join us in this video as we explore events of the scariest day in NFL history. The Bengals attack first, trucking down the field in less than three minutes for a Tyler Boyd touchdown. But Buffalo responds with a 25-yard field goal from Tyler Bass. The stadium's energy is so intense, you can't even imagine yourself thinking. It is the scariest moment in NFL history. With just over six minutes remaining in the first quarter, the Bengals have the ball and are on the second play of the drive. With a ball to T. Higgins, Joe Burrow drops his shoulder in an attempt to pick up a few extra yards. You can see that when DeMar Hamlin makes the tackle, everything seems normal. Standing again, Hamlin twitches his helmet and falls to the ground. Now, whistles are blown, another Bills player is down, and play is halted right away. Within 10 seconds, a swarm of athletic trainers and medical personnel rush onto the field. Emergency CPR is performed for 10 minutes while an ambulance is dispatched. DeMar remains on the field for almost 20 minutes and his family rushes to his side as both teams look on in disbelief. The stadium, once filled with excessive noise, is now eerily quiet. First responders provide oxygen to DeMar and his mother before they are loaded into an ambulance bound for the University of Cincinnati Medical Center just four miles away. The ambulance leaves the stadium at 9.25 p.m., 30 minutes after DeMar's collapse. Joe Buck announces on a chaotic TV broadcast that they have five minutes to get ready to go back to playing, as communicated by the league and those on the field. However, there is no movement. Teammates remain seated, exchanging hugs and shedding tears for their friend whose situation remains unclear. During all of this, Buffalo head coach Sean McDermott decided to pull his team off the field and back to the locker room another 30 minutes later, and the game was officially postponed over an hour while the rest of the world was waiting for an update. In a touching display of solidarity, Zach Taylor, the Bengals head coach, and Stefan Diggs, along with other players, visit DeMar at the hospital. However, a poignant moment unfolds as Diggs is stopped by a police officer on his way in, having almost to push his way through. In defiance, he asserts, we just had to be there for our teammate. Outside, an additional 100 supporters stand hand in hand, showing unwavering support. Finally, an announcement sheds light on DeMar's situation. He suffered a heart attack on the field, and although his heartbeat has been restored, his health remains critical. Despite this, a remarkable turn occurs the night after the incident. The Chasing MS Foundation, DeMar's charity and toy drive, experiences an overwhelming surge in donations. The foundation had received 74,000 before the Monday night game, but with the support of over 119,000 new donors, that amount had skyrocketed to over $3 million by the next morning. The generosity continues, surpassing $9 million and counting. Amid this incredible moment, updates on DeMar's health were scarce for almost three days. Then, on January 5th, not only does the NFL formally cancel the Bills-Bengals game, but the UC Medical Center releases crucial information about DeMar to the public. His brain activity is fully functional. While relying on a breathing tube, he can breathe, he can write, hold hands with his family, and even ask, did we win? Doctors and nurses respond, you've won. You've won the game of life. The positive trajectory continues as the following day brings three inspiring remarks from DeMar and a significant update. His breathing tube is removed because he can now breathe entirely on his own. He maintains his neurologic function and continues to communicate with his family. DeMar is even able to say his first words to his teammates in over four days. In a FaceTime call, he tells them simply, love you boys. The NFL wasted no time getting back into action following the intense incident. Love took center stage 
expressed in unique and heartfelt ways. During warm-ups, a powerful symbol of solidarity emerged as every team across the league sported Love for DeMar shirts. Yet, the Buffalo Bills took it to another level during their home game. Players adorned hats and jerseys bearing DeMar Hamlin's number three, creating a distinctive display of unity. Highmark Stadium, packed with enthusiastic fans, eagerly anticipated the Bills' entrance. Banners declaring love for DeMar were carried by several players, setting the tone for a poignant moment. Just before kickoff, the medical team that responded to DeMar's collapse was rightfully acknowledged, and the entire squad proudly wore number three patches. The game's commencement, however, surpassed expectations. The New England Patriots won the coin toss, but chose to defer, handing the first kickoff to the Bills. The ensuing events played out like scenes from a cinematic masterpiece. After winning the toss, New England deferred, and Hines took the opening kickoff, breaking a tackle and sprinting past midfield. It was a storybook moment, an opening kickoff return for DeMar Hamlin. The stadium erupted in jubilation. What made it even more extraordinary was DeMar's live reaction at the hospital. When Hines scored, DeMar, watching on TV, couldn't contain his excitement. He leaped out of his chair, nearly triggering alarms in the ICU, as the UC medical staff recounted. This emotional intensity resonated throughout the entire game, creating an indelible memory for all involved, players, fans, and key participants alike. The Bills secured a 35-23 victory. Almost immediately after the win, they FaceTimed DeMar, and the gifting of the game ball ensued. DeMar and Danny Kellington, the Bills' associate athletic trainer, who played a crucial role in administrating emergency CPR, each received a game ball. Kellington had, just days before, saved DeMar's life as part of the Swift medical response team. Their actions were instrumental in ensuring DeMar's survival on the field. DeMar's remarkable recovery allowed him to return to Buffalo the day after the emotionally charged regular season finale. Transferred to Buffalo General Medical Center, he was discharged from the UC Medical Center on January 9th, exactly one week after the incident. Upgraded from critical to good, he could walk and engage in physical therapy. While at Buffalo General, neurological and cardiovascular tests were conducted, and within a day, DeMar was permitted to continue his rehabilitation outside the hospital with family and teammates. Just a day before Buffalo's playoff opener against Miami, he visited teammates, exuding immense joy and providing a significant emotional lift for a team grappling with the recent tragedy. A week later, DeMar attended Buffalo's divisional game against Cincinnati, delivering his first public address since the incident a few days after. I can't tell you how appreciative I am of all the love, all the support, and everything that's just been coming in my way. Social media played a crucial role, providing constant updates on DeMar's status and fostering unwavering support from family, friends, and fans. From fan-made videos to endorsements from notable figures outside the NFL, the outpouring of support for DeMar Hamlin turned a harrowing incident into a testament of resilience, unity, and love. Throughout his entire journey, DeMar's resilience and appreciation for others have shone brightly. In a heartfelt gesture, he reached out to his teammate Tredavious White in the middle of the night, expressing apologies for the challenges his team faced since the accident. Moreover, DeMar extended gratitude to all the dedicated medical staff who played a crucial role in his recovery. In a remarkable move, he created merchandise, and every penny generated goes directly to the University of Cincinnati Trauma Center. Since that unforgettable Monday Night Football game on January 2nd, 2023, the world has been witness to the transformation of the NFL's scariest day into a profound showcase of love and support. This incredible journey has not only embraced DeMar Hamlin, but has also celebrated the unsung heroes, the medical staff, who played a pivotal role in saving his life. In an interview with ESPN, his uncle, Dorian Glenn, said that his nephew was resuscitated twice, once on the field and once in the hospital. 
What happened is unheard of in any professional sports scene, especially in the country's most popular league. Cincinnati has been unfortunate enough to bear witness to some of the scariest moments in recent NFL history. In the NFL, injuries are a normal occurrence, but the sight of Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin collapsing into the ground Monday night after a first quarter tackle was chilling. If you enjoy this video, kindly give us a thumbs up and do well to subscribe to this channel for more interesting sports updates. Catch you in our next video.